Hello and welcome to This is Nigeria, Unlocking Her Potential. Now this is the program that showcases Nigeria's investment and development potentials across the 36 states of Nigeria. And today we're looking at unlocking prosperity through partnership in the agro sector. That was the theme of Feed Nigeria Summit, which took place recently in Abuja, with all stakeholders in the agri sector participating and various panel of discussion took place, discussing the problems and the challenges besetting the agriculture sector in Nigeria. And they arrived at a communique. That's the purpose of this program today. Don't go away. My name is Mayawa Oluwabi. Stay with us. No nation depends on one source of revenue if it wants to create a sustainable economic development and a future for its citizens. Countries have all grown and sustained their respective economies through non-oil exports and Nigeria Export Promotion Council, NEPC, is strategically positioned to do more on 22 priority export products under the Zero Oil Plan, the One State, One Product Initiative and the Nigeria Diaspora Export Program, which are needed pillars of success in our economic recovery and growth plan. Invest in non-oil export business such as sorghum, cassava, yam, shearnut, ginger, and rip bountifully. Export business guarantees a prosperous future through inclusive wealth and job creation. Join hands to make Nigeria one of the top 20 largest economies in the world. Export business, tomorrow's business. For further inquiries, visit .nepc.gov.ng. Agricultural revolution is a fundamental precondition for economic growth, especially in developing countries. Nigeria in sub-Saharan Africa had made her mark as an agricultural state pre-independence era up to the early 80s before the steady decline as a consequence of the discovery of oil. Interestingly, 81% of Nigeria's landmass is arable with 18 million hectares classified as permanent pasture for livestock production. Landmark agricultural programs like Operation Feed the Nation and the Lower Benue River Basin and Rural Development Authorities were established in 1976. The African Development Project and the Green Revolution Program also followed in 1980. Spending a mammoth $18 billion on food importation annually in present-day Nigeria from a paltry 123 million in the 70s is alarming. The federal government of Nigeria, in furtherance of her resolve to elevate agriculture to a priority earner, announced the Food Import Forex Restriction Policy in August 2019, aimed at encouraging farmers and production of food and raw materials that could be grown here in the country as a means of conserving the nation's foreign reserves. The private sector has not been left out in the quest to turn Nigeria into an agricultural force. Over time, several financial institutions such as UBA, First Bank of Nigeria, Stambic IBTC, and several others have created several schemes through which farmers have been substantially supported. Guinness Nigeria PLC particularly initiated a scheme targeted at smallholders many of whom have been manifestly empowered. The Federation of Agricultural Commodities Associations of Nigeria, FACAN, and Agro Nigeria Limited, as part of the auxiliary activities, recently organized a special summit tagged Feed Nigeria Summit at the Sheraton Hotel Abuja, where possibilities around the sectors were further explored with the theme Unlocking Prosperity Through Partnership. In attendance, too, was the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Al-Haji Nanono Muhammad Sabo, to declare the program open. He spoke on uniting to grow Nigeria's agro-economy. The topic of today is very apt, and in my opinion, is a time bound, especially for this country, Nigeria. Nigeria is a big partner, not only in agriculture, 
but in any economic activity in the West African sub-region. Maybe some of you would like to know, 60% of the GDP of the West African sub-region is Nigeria. And when we speak, if people don't listen, but when we act, they listen. Uh, you know, the last speaker have already spoken most of the important issues that probably I need to expatiate on. But be it as it may, uh, agriculture is an integral part of our national security. And not only that, agriculture, apart from feeding us, also give us a platform for employment of our people and also give us a platform in the work stage, not for what we produce, but for the potential that we have to produce. It is of special note that the Bainway delegation to the summit perhaps attests to its reputation as the food basket of the nation. The delegation was led by the Deputy Governor Engineer Benson Abonu, the Speaker Honorable Titus Uba, Benue State House of Assembly. The Deputy Governor was emphatic in hailing the place of agriculture in the socio-economic life of Nigeria. Year in, year out, and we listen to speeches upon speeches, and we listen to presentations by experts, professors, and so on and so forth. And it has always been the same story, no difference. We hear the same thing year in, year out. And every time it has been stories of wars, comparisons with other nations, and how Nigeria is at the bottom and other nations are at the top. I think we need to be coming here now every year to listen to success stories. What did we do last year? We should be looking at statistics of our success stories. What did we do? Where did we stand? Or where were you? Where were we in 2017? How did we improve in 2018? What do we need to do in 2019 so that we can get better? I think those are the stories we need to listen to. Lead presenter, Barrister Richard Mark Mbaram. Editor-in-Chief and CEO Agro Nigeria, who is also the convener of the summit, kick-started the event with a talk on the sub team first-of-a-kind solution delivery vehicle targeting agro cooperative and associations. It requires a very consistent set of principles, rules, and uh, modus operandi for a long stretch of time, sometimes minimum 50 years. Dr. Pereira would agree with me there were efforts at the time to legislate, to bring the agricultural transformation agenda into you know, the purview of legislation. If that had happened, it would have been possible for us to still be talking about the ATA today because it would have been a law of the National Assembly or an act of the parliament. The president of FACAN, Dr. Victor Iyama, followed with the team addressing the problem of economic subversion via multi-stakeholders engagement. So the most important aspect of any economy, as included, is our agro-economy. But what we've been having, aside from the fact that a lot of wealth has been created through various agricultural commodities, We've had a lot of talking about processing, which is key, very, very key. We can start talking about over 52 different agricultural commodities in this country, which ideally should put us in a place to earn over $100 billion annually. The discussants include Abdul Hamid Aliu, MD of 
Nysal PLC, who spoke on the sub theme A New Agricultural Growth Paradigm Through Smart Value Chain Financing. If we can get our act right, we can supply the rest of Africa because of the entrepreneurial nature of Nigerians. When we do things right, we have a chance to dominate Africa. Again, to do that, to take advantage of our natural environment, like I mentioned earlier, we need the four capitals. We need technology capital, equipment capital, human capital, and finance capital. These three capitals, human technology and equipment, truly speaking, let's not deceive ourselves, we don't have it in Nigeria. Professor Oyelarong Oyeyinka, SSA to the African Development Bank president, spoke on creating a prosperous economic through partnership based on agro-industrialization. Industrialization that is sustainable is that where you actually process something. You convert starch, uh, you convert cassava to starch. You convert cassava to ethanol. You take, you don't carry cassava and ship it to, uh, to China. You are shipping water and moisture. You do it here. We want to do it right here. This is what the African government man, we are pushing. The moment you do it somewhere else, you are shipping your, own, uh, your employment also to those countries. That's where they'll be employed. That's where the factories will grow. We have to stop. We have to really stop you know, shipping all our, the, the prospects for our young people to other countries. It's very convenient. It's very easy to do. Just grow it and ship it away. But the heart of prosperity is to manufacture. This is the point. Uh, that I want us to take, take home from this uh, particular challenge. And when we refuse to, because we have refused to, or let me say, we have failed to develop the industrial sector. While Mr. Zakios Isua of International Institute of Tropical Agriculture touched on next generation, how we see agriculture. And today, as I talk to you, we have successful entrepreneurs that are doing excellently well. We have example of a poultry producer in, in Imo State who was sought under that platform. We also have um, our colleagues in Ibadan that are doing wonderfully well in catfish production. Our colleagues also in the DRC, they are into massive HGTF production from cassava. One important thing I want to bring on the table today is our youth have also seen the, the, the importance of bringing ICT to agribusiness. Our colleagues in Uganda were able to use the ICT in promoting their businesses. They produce vegetables and they develop an app which they use in selling their products. From Nigeria here, some of the examples, number one is my colleague. The young man you are seeing there has his master's in management studies from Coventry University. He came back to the country and there was no job. The next thing he started doing was to come for the agribusiness training. And today as I speak to you, Onyeka is the CEO of Onyeka Farm. He's into catfish production. He produces the fish, he packages the fish, and he sells the fish. And he's also an employer of labor. As far as I'm concerned, he has contributed his part in reducing the unemployment in Nigeria. The chief operating officer of Floor Mills, Sadiq Osman, did justice to the theme rural development through value chain optimization. Floor Mills example. A trader, whether you're selling chewing gum or whatever you're selling, now they've moved to be doing sales of about 20,000 naira per day. Same person. Why is that? Because of the level of economic activity that that area brings. And you'll continue to bring that. So I, I think it, it's something that sets the scene for what we're about to talk about, of these special agri-industrial agri processing zones. Um, I will just leave with one comment, since I'm going to be moderating the session, so I, I, I may not have a chance to say too much, unless you have questions. To give you a sense, of the scale of this investment and what Nigeria requires to move forward. Um, how scary, I will tell you one thing. The level of investment that we've made in Sunti today, for Nigeria to produce, the, if our Sunti was operating at full capacity, that's one, you've seen one, right? 
for Nigeria to produce the amount of sugar from the sugar cane that should be produced in a normal, based on normal yield. We are not talking about Brazilian type because Brazil is the world global standard in sugar cane and sugar. But if normal African standard, we need at least 10 of these in Nigeria to produce the amount of sugar that Nigeria was consuming in 2016. And each year, that amount of sugar increases by 3%. So that's to give you a sense. Julius Atoro, Chairman and CEO AT&S, the initiator of the first private industrial park in Nigeria, located in Boko, Benue State, also shared his experience. Now, what really is an industrial park? It's just a collection, a place where all the factors of production, all the infrastructure are put together in one place so that a would-be investor goes into a place where the buildings are already existing, the power is already in place, the water, if you request, is there, the weighing facilities, communication, banking, all of that are in one place. So he walks in and then takes space, puts down his machinery and begins to produce whatever it is he wants to produce. You can put it side by side with a place where you go in to rent a residential apartment to move your furniture into state. The water is fixed, power is there, air conditioners are there, you just move in and you know and you stay now we don't have much of that for productive activities in nigeria and in the developed world industrial parks are completely you you, you just can't ignore them when, when you want to drive uh, development now in the in, in the 80s and maybe in the 60s for the case of lagos where in the 80s there had been attempts by some government by some governments to start uh, industrial parks and some effort was made we've not really been very successful but i'll tell you what uh, I will give you one case, one example that would exemplify to you the advantage of clustering development in one place. Let's take the example of just a, a code room. If code somebody, room. Just one code room. Oh, yeah. If somebody wants to start, a small guy wants to start a code room today, he's probably going to buy the code room, everything put together, code room 2.5 million. He needs to have a generator. He needs to have a place where he's going to rent, pay rent, and put a security van and all of that. When NEPA goes off, he has to go to generator, diesel is running. That's the case of one guy. By the mathematics we've done, about 7 million he requires to set it up and run for one year. Now, if you have 20 of them, it means you need 140 million to set up and run those separate code rooms in one year. Mr. Jerry Gushop, who is head of agribusiness Stambik IBTC, was quite insightful as well. Agribusiness is for you to be able to get profit. You should be able to, you know, feed your own, you know, our family. So for all the aggregators, we follow the entire value chain. Whether you are a flour miller, whether you are, I mean, uh, you are into fish uh, farming, whether you are into oil production, whether you are into cashew, whether you are into cocoa, like Ali would say, they are already de-risking the agriculture for us. And what we do is that all our businesses, once we have been able to bring all these business models for us, we normally engage NASA up initial. We sit down, we discuss with NASA, this is what we want to do. And NASA will say, please, we are happy to partner with you. And that has, you know, that has been very, very fantastic. But I also want us to know, when you come into agriculture or agribusiness, you must have the passion. Most people are coming just to make money. When you just come to make money, you may not be able to make it. But when you have that passion, sincerely speaking, you will be able to do a lot of things. Adebola Mohammed, MD, Smarta Fakan, spoke on ICT role in boosting agribusiness return. Smarta Fakan is a partnership between Fakan which is the Federation of Agro Communities of Nigeria, um, an NGO called FLIST and IBM. And to some extent, uh, the Ministry of Water Resources and of course the Ministry of uh, Investment, sorry, Industry and Investment. And for the basis of this, this summit, the most important trade uh, that is most common is of agriculture. 
And who are the ones we are targeting here? The smallholders. Therefore, Sparta Fakai uh, is being designed for the smallholders who are well over 100 million today in Nigeria. Green poultry, cashew, cassava, sesame seed, even them. Well over 50 commodities in their large numbers. So, Sparta Fakai is fundamentally designed to bring all these players to a platform that will be digitally managed. In all, the summit was very interactive with ample opportunities for members of the audience who made valuable contributions. The summit was rounded off with a special award night to celebrate outstanding contributors to the sector. Maintaining a leading role in impute manufacture and supply, thereby increasing productivity among smallholder farmers, Indorama gets the impute company of the year. Of a year award. Okay, we meant to know that our Greek business is the in thing. That we should not see ourselves as farmers, but we should know that we are into real business. That will bring yes into agri business. Okay. And from my own experience, actually, I've seen that agri business is really a very lucrative business. There have been mundane things that would information that we take for granted, or everyday information, useful information that we're not aware of, as it relates to the benefit of different crops and different. Uh, uh, aspects of agriculture that we've had the privilege of, of finding out for free. The major thing I'm taking from the summit, I attended last year's and then this year's soon, and I realized that um, the summit is really focusing on the needs of what Nigerians need to hear, which is, um, which is technology, um, institutional farming, making sure that the farmers farm right, and also funding uh, and smart farming. Yeah. What, uh, as one of the panelists and what we, uh, we, we had and discussed about, I think uh, if the federal, the state and the local government are ready to start this agribusiness very well, it will reduce unemployment rate in Nigeria. Well, this is where we draw the curtains today. Every good road must have an end, like I always say on this program. And I'm sure you've been enlightened, you've been informed. Look at what transpired at the Feed Nigeria Summit. It's a lot going on in the agri sector. I'm happy for this country because finally we're harnessing these opportunities, these potentials that's been lying all around us. And I like the interface of technology with agriculture. This is going to be a good year for agriculture in Nigeria. My name is Mayowa Uluwebi. Thank you for watching. God bless Nigeria.